Okay, let's talk about the Indiana Core Elementary Education Generalist Assessment. So quite a lengthy title here, but if you're watching this video, I assume that you are preparing uh, for this particular exam. And like a lot of states, this is kind of like a general knowledge exam testing you in um, other subject uh, areas uh, other than the one that you actually teach. So obviously this, we're talking about uh, elementary education and part of what's going to be on the generalist assessment for um, the Indiana Corps elementary education generalist assessment uh, amongst other topics is of course math and that's what we're going to be uh, covering today. Now what I have here for you is kind of a uh, little pop quiz if you will. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm a middle and high school math teacher so I definitely know what it's like to take certification exams and the one thing I can tell you from my own personal experience uh, for teaching many years and taking uh, various exams is uh, and you probably already know this as well is that you do have to study. You have to put a lot of effort into um, studying and preparing for these particular exams or assessments because they're pretty challenging as they should be. We're talking about you know um, a professional examination. Sometimes I, I think I'll make a little quick commentary here that a lot of people just don't understand uh, what teachers have to <laughs> do to to actually teach to become a teacher. All the education, all the certification exams, the continuing professional education. It's a lot of work and of course um, if you're studying for this exam, that's the right thing to do. So um, here to help you with math, a little bit um, more about my program. I actually offer a full uh, test prep uh, course for this, um, for the Indiana Core Elementary Education Generalist Assessment. If you want to check that out after this video, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this uh, video. You can kind of uh, take a look at that if you want to. But with that being said, let's take a look at a math problem that you should be able to um, like this we're talking about basic algebra here okay basic algebra and geometry you're definitely going to be you know uh, be tested upon uh, on on the Indiana core elementary education generalist assessment so with that in mind I have a basic algebra problem here for you now what I'd like you to do is to maybe pause the problem and try to figure it out on your own of course I'm going to solve it and then we'll talk a little bit more about some uh, some suggestions to move forward uh, to get ready for the math section on this particular exam. Okay, so with that being said, maybe you want to go ahead and pause the video and try. Now, if not, let me go ahead and uh, give you a clue, and then maybe in any time you want to kind of do this problem on your own, go ahead and do so. So we have an equation here, okay, in algebra. So this is an equal sign. It's an equation, and it's actually uh, something that we call a proportion as well. So some of you might be familiar with uh, these words, okay, rates, ratios, and proportions, okay. So <clears throat> now we'll probably already have a pretty good idea of like the word uh, ratio, right? So what's a common way that we hear that word? Well, like student-teacher ratio, right? That's an important kind of term we use in education. A rate, like the what's the rate of the vehicle? That might correlate to speed. Uh, proportion, we kind of use like, well, something's proportional to that type of things. But these things have very specific definitions in mathematics. So just really quickly, um, rates and ratios are nothing but fractions, okay? These are just fractions, right? Now, there are fractions with particular units of measure, all right, units of measure going on, like, uh, for example, 60 miles per hour. Okay, this is an example of a rate per one hour. It's a fraction, but we have particular units of measure. In terms of rates, we have different units of measure. Ratios, we're, we're well, let me just kind of go back to rates. Rates, we're measuring two different concepts here. Here's distance and this is time. Now with ratios, we would be measuring uh, basically the same concept. Now, I don't want to kind of go off on a tangent and turn this into a whole lesson on rates, ratio, and proportions, but you know, I wanted to give you some additional information if you're sticking with me through this particular video. All right, now let's talk about proportions. So what is a proportion? Well, a proportion in mathematics is nothing more than two equal fractions. So for example, if I have the fraction one half, go in and think of another fraction that's equivalent to one half. Okay, that's the same as one half, but we're using different numbers. Well, let's say three over six, right? 
or 5 over 10. There's any number of fractions, but in mathematics, a proportion is two equal fractions. So these two fractions are equal. Now, of course, I could reduce this fraction and I end up with one half. But the reason why I bring this up is because we're going to use these, uh, this knowledge to help us solve this particular problem. Now, when you have a proportion, we have two equal fractions, something called the cross product is valid. So what does that mean? Well, you kind of see I did kind of went like a little crisscross pattern, and, and I used the word product. So I'm talking about the cross product. So when I use the, when we think about the cross product, what we're doing is we're multiplying across a proportion. So I have two equal fractions. I have one fraction here and another fraction here. So two times three. Let's write that over here. Two times three. This is a cross product this way. And then I have 1 times 6 here, 1 times 6. So you could see here, 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 times 6 is 6. So when you have a proportion, the cross products are equal, right? It's a very, very important fact uh, to kind of keep in mind. So algebraically, when I look at what's going on here, I have one fraction. Now, of course, there's a you know variable in here, but still it's a fraction uh, equal to another fraction. So I can apply this concept of the cross product here to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I'm kind of going pretty quick, uh, just in the interest of time, because this is, you know, I'm covering a lot of a lot of things you need to know, but I'm kind of doing it uh, rather quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply across, and then we'll solve for this variable x. So we're going to go 3 times x plus 1. Now you have to always keep any time you have a sum or difference with a variable, like x plus 2, y minus 3, and you're going to do anything with it, multiply anything with it, these are always quantity. They, you always have to put parentheses around them. Even if the, uh, if the way it's written doesn't have parentheses, you always kind of remember that there are parentheses around these. So this is going to be 3 times x plus 1. Let's write that this way. 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 2 times 7. Okay, so all I did here was use this concept of the cross product, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and just solve this basic equation for x. Now, if you think you can solve this equation, which you should be able to handle for this particular exam, go ahead and pause the video and, and do so. But I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. So here I have 3 times x plus 1. So i got to use a distributive property. So that's 3 times x plus 3 times 1. So that's going to be 3x plus 3 is equal to 2 times 7, which, of course, is 14. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, now I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and I get 3x is equal to 11. All right, excellent. Now, to solve for x, I just simply need to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3, and I get x is equal to 11 thirds, and that is the answer. So, if you got that answer, or if you do this and you turn this into a decimal, that's fine too. But if you got 11 thirds, excellent. All right, so this is a basic illustration um, of uh, the kind of algebra that you are going to be expected to know on uh, the core elementary uh, generalist assessment. Okay, remember, uh, you know, with these general knowledge tests, you're going to be, you know, expected to, you know, have a good uh, skill sets and reading and writing or whatever the case is, you know, it's your kind of overall broad academic skills. So uh, on these particular exams, you know, algebra, basic algebra, basic geometry, and I would classify this as a kind of a basic algebra problem. Okay, it's really testing your ability. Hey, do you understand rates, ratios, proportions, how to work with basic equations, etc. Now there's a few other ways you can think of this problem, but I kind of wanted to cover it uh, um, these kind of concepts, rates, ratio, and proportions, because these definitely come up um, a lot on a lot of different types of test. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, now, if you find that, hey, you, you kind of like my teaching style, let me go ahead and, uh, again, invite you to my full prep, full prep course uh, for the Indiana Core Elementary Education Generalist Assessment. I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for well over 12 years. Um, but I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. So hopefully you consider subscribing. Hey, if you like this video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, are you, uh, you know, are you just 
going to be teaching elementary or do one day you, you want to get into middle school, high school. I actually started in high school myself and then I went to middle school. So you can kind of shift back and forth. Are you brand new to teaching? Um, any feedback is good feedback. Are you struggling in math? Are you taking this test for your second or third time? By the way, there's no shame in retaking or, or you know, unfortunately it happens to uh, the best of us, but failing in a certification exam the first time is not uncommon. I know for the uh, test I took was the uh, praxis to teach high school level math. Um, I want to say I think it was like 50, 60, well, maybe not that high, but I know like maybe like 50% of the people who took this exam the first time didn't make it. So <laughs> don't be, don't beat yourself up if you're having to take this exam or you're struggling with it. That's kind of normal. Okay. So again, preparation matters and the, what learning material that you're studying from is critical. So hopefully, you know, you'll, um, you know, you'll find my teaching style, you know, and maybe my course uh, to be uh, helpful uh, for your success in this uh, exam. Well, that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Um, one teacher to another, I know what you're going through. Um, I know the challenges, but again, uh, there's huge rewards being a teacher as well that only other teachers understand. But I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.